Great rising, YouTube. Great rising, Facebook. I'm trying to cover this mustache a little bit. Hey, great risings. I'm walking. Yes, indeed. I'm walking. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Just for me. Line up I'm the cameras. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, we don't want that light in there. Okay. I'm walking. So happy to Get be your mat. Get your chairs. Get your weights. Jump on your bike. Start your treadmill. Thank you for the company. I'm walking. Yes, great rising, great rising in your life, in your home, in your family, in your marriage, on your job, in your business, in your health. Great rising. Yes, indeed. Raw is this. <laughs> yeah, raw, raw. Just this. Yeah, I know. I wanted to be hot. But I got another song for y'all that I woke up singing this morning. We put this man in the right spot. This is my sweat tip. I'm sweating my sweat tip. I ain't sharing it with a whole bunch of sweaty old sticky other members. I feel good. I knew that I would. I feel nice. Black sugar and spice. So good. So nice. that I got you. Boom, 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 boom. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I did. Well, I saw y'all Saturday. Hey, let me say my great rises. To Mary, my Jones. Uh... Ha! Sean L. Milton. Right? Ram Rama Schmidt. Um Jane. My cousin little Vicky. I've seen her in a few days. Uh Yvonne. Oh, Elliot, my friend Elliot, um, uh, my friend Rick, um, uh, Marilyn, um, and everybody else. Yay, yay, I got Mary, I got my Diane, I got Canada. My Mary and my Julian. Yes, I feel good, y'all. Who we're into our eighth month. Yes. We all season walkers. We are all season walkers. Let's hear it for the old season walkers. We have well we have done all. We've done winter. We started in winter. We did spring, now we're in summer. Only season we haven't walked through yet is fall. But everything else we walked through. Yay for the walk through, yay for the walk through. We're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. Happy bodies, happy bodies. Happy bodies, every day, happy bodies. Yeah, honey, this matter matters to me, child. This matter matters to me. <laughs> no, when I was growing up, you couldn't say you love your body because they said you're vain. You're vain. You're selfish. But at this age now, the thing that has been with me the longest 
has been this body. I, I got sisters I haven't seen. <laughs> Please, probably never see ever again. I have a I, I, mother I've never seen. I got mother and stepmother I'll never see again. Sperm donor I'll never see again. Um. And what else? Um. So many grandmother, but what I have that I see all the time is this body. And I love my body. I love it, I love it, I love it. I really, really love it. I love it, I love it. I think so much of it, of it, of it. I love it, love it, love it. Hey, we have five minutes already. I remember when I was sitting in class. Now, I had heard it before. I heard it before, but some, sometimes you hear it from a different voice, a different situation, and it latches on to you. And I was sitting in my biology class. It's also my coding teacher class. And she said, treatment starts. When you go to the hospital, treatment starts. When you go and complain to the doctor about yourself. When you go to a doctor and complain about yourself. Then he hears what you're saying and then he goes from there. So I said to myself... That's why I don't have a relationship with doctors, because I don't complain on myself. If I have a headache, I say basically nine times out of ten because I don't get headaches. But if I get one, it's because I need to drink some water. And I can go in down two glasses of water and I'm straight. So you see, I'm, I, I have no reason to go to complain about nothing. Um, I know I'm getting old. I don't wish to be young. It's the process of life. But there are people who are old that go to the doctor and say, listen, I'm getting old and I don't like it. And he says, well, I got a treatment for that. And he commences to chop me up. So I, I don't have that kind of complaints. Um, I didn't have tooth complaints until I went to the dentist one day and they said, you got to take enough antibiotics to kill a horse. And then I didn't go twice a year. I tried in the beginning, but I got too sick. So then I went to once a year, but then I got sick that year. And then I started skipping, and we're in the situation we are now. But they're not blamed for my tooth because they said, oh, go to the dentist, take care of your teeth, and yes, you do all that stuff. But I'm to blame for not going when you bogusly, because we found out later, maybe seven years ago, was a big old joke. Everybody was laughing, ha, ha, ha. We tricked those fools into taking antibiotics before they went to the doctor and they didn't even need it. Ha, 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 ha. So it was a big old joke that for 30 years, we had to suffer taking antibiotics. Just for a funny, just for a funny. Between the dental, um, people, the pharmaceutical people, and the doctors. It was a big fun. I say it was collaboration because it initially started that if you went to the dentist, you had to go to the doctor. See, you just used to go to the dentist, and I have a heart murmur, but I used to just go to the dentist and get my dental work. But then they said, oh, you have a heart murmur. You can't just go to the dentist. You have to go to the doctor. And then you have to go to the dentist. So you go to the doctor to get the prescription for the antibiotics. <laughs> and then... Well, let me listen to me. And then... You go... You go to the medical doctor. He give you the prescription. And whatever other money he can make off you. Then you go to the dentist. 
You go to the pharmacist, get the prescription, take all that medication, you go to the dentist, and he says, I'm just going to do an x-ray. And you sit in that chair and you say to yourself, why do I have to take damn near 300 milligrams of antibiotics for you to x-ray my teeth? Well, because... For me to touch you, you have to take antibiotics. Because if not, you'll have a heart attack and die when I release uh, the germs. But you're just taking pictures. You're, you're not releasing any germs. Doesn't matter. Still got to take them. So, that was a 30-year old scam for me. So, I'm good. There's no way I'm going to complain about my body to anyone. Well, basically, just a minute to tell you, I've been doing this for years. And I said, I'm 63. Like, oh, that's not old. That's not old. Okay, my mother died at 36, 37. Uh, I have two aunts that never made it out their 30s. I have two uncles that never made it past 21. I have a cousin that didn't make it past 30. Um, these are on my mother's side. So, for me, when I passed 36, and what a chore that was, I'm feeling something on my leg, maybe it's spring or something? Anyway, um, when I passed 30, I was like, oh, shoot, I mean 36. I, I passed my mother's age, so I felt old already. I was like, oh, well, 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 I made it. Because when something that happens, when your mother dies early, you, without knowing it, have this thing in the back of your mind that you won't live past her age. And then you live, live past her age, and you're all excited about it. Anyway, um, so, 63 is oh a couple more years i'll be able to double the age that my mother spent on this earth with this wonderful body of mine i'll be able to you know my body would have lived long with her she complained about her body a lot to doctors she complained about her body a lot and they <laughs> they cut every complaint so i think i got a string hanging i'll take care of it on the break and, um, so I don't complain on my body. Um, my grandmother taught me homeopathic type things. And her thing is, was always, if you really feel sick, take a laxative. <laughs> Flush your whole body. Then after that, if you're still sick, your body will show you what you need, what you need to do. And... That's what I do. If there's like nothing I, anything else I do that doesn't stop whatever situation I'm feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm in two days laxative. I'll do enemas. I used to do, uh, I still do, um, oh gosh, I can't think of the name right now. Magnesium. Uh, I still use that. Um, yeah, yeah. Epsosol. I still use Epsosol. Um, I, I still use, um, black castor oil, but I only use black castor oil under my arms to, um, break up any laying around fat that's not doing anything. When you put that underneath your arms, and they call it something that, like, it sits there in your breast or something. They go in there and cut your whole breast off. All you got to do is, for seven good days, use that Jamaican black castor oil like deodorant. And it'll break up anything. It'll break up all of this. Anyway, she complained a lot about her body, my mother. And they chopped her up. I think she's just like that Harrietta Harriet woman. I think she got one of them cancer cells running around there that they're experimenting on. Um, 
I love my body. And that's why I'm here, as you can see. Love, love, love. I'm not getting no love to nobody, but I understand how it is. I'm not even sure I'm on, so. <laughs> that's how Facebook is. But, whew, the month of August, and we're almost at our break. For this lovely Monday. I feel good. I knew that I would. I feel nice. Like sugar and spice. Hey, hey! So nice. Uh, uh, so good. I got you. Let me see if this strange hand off me, cow. Something is in that marine. I wonder if it's them the skedidos. Sometimes the skedidos get me. Especially in this human body. Oh, looky who. Hey, that's my other Joni. Morning. Hey, great runs. That's my other Joni. See, I told you I have my two Joneses. One of the Joneses checked, checked in. Here we go on this Monday. Monday, body loving Monday. Body, body, I love my body, body. Body, body, I love my body, body. Body, body, don't hurt nobody. I love my body. My body, body, I love my body. My body, body. <laughs> You gotta love your body, honey. Mm -hmm. Body loving Monday. Oh yeah. Whew. I got you can see I got good breath. Mm -hmm. Look at all this love this morning. Ooh, happy we made it through the storm, right? Ah! My daughter kept coming to me, she kept saying. Mommy, these people, these people, these people keep bothering me. They keep talking about the storm coming. And I didn't go get any food. So, let me tell you something about my grandmother. My grandmother told me, you got rice, you got a meal. You got grits, you got a meal. I can make food out of anything. Ooh, y'all comments are there. Y'all gotta wait till I finish because I can't see it from where I am. But I will respond after the walk. So, I don't worry about stuff like that. I usually do an inventory. You got onions, you got rice, yep. You got onions, you got onions, and you got the onion soup mix. Okay. I stick a little pieces. I got like a couple pieces of salmon, a couple pieces of chicken, a couple pieces of... See, to me, I didn't think she needed to go shopping because basically, push come to shelf, I know how to whip up anything. We got flour, we'll always get bread. You know, I used to make bread when she was a child when our rough days. <laughs> so, but she doesn't mind these people. These people keep contacting me. These people. And then finally I asked her, I said, well, what people are you talking about? Your people on Bingo? She said no. <laughs> the governor of the state, the mayor of the city, the state representative for our area, they kept texting her, telling her to get ready for the storm. <laughs> she kept saying the people, the people, the people keep contacting me. Oh, I just ran so they got her so much. And okay, and I think somebody put up a picture of Facebook of shelves being cleaned. Like, you know, back in the day, last year when they when when the people who own the toilet paper and paper towel made put uh, how, how, when the people who own and make toilet paper and paper towels uh made a pretend crisis of having a shortage of so you can buy more 
and the biggest people. Did I tell y'all y'all can mute me? Always know y'all can mute me. My feelings will never be hurt. And the people who own the biggest controllers of the conservative and the GOPQ party are those Koch brothers. And those Koch brothers make paper products. So you put out this fake urgency and within a month, the Koch brothers made over a billion dollars with y'all buying all those paper towel products and stashing them like because you thought there would be no toilet paper. If you look around and see a tree, no, there's always toilet paper. No trees fell. No trees fell. So there's always going to be toilet paper. So that's why they got all this money to send all that money to Fox to poison you all up. But anyway, y'all know y'all can meet me if you want to. But you got to take care of yourself. And you can't give in to that hysteria. So my daughter, she just went out and she came back with stuff. Like, just like stuff. And I said, do you feel better now knowing that we got stuff? And she said, yes, because we had stuff. We had bread. We had cut down on eating bread. We were doing so good. We hadn't had bread. We were all fiending for bread. We were fiending for bread. We were not going to buy anything. But then with this storm coming, so she brought bread back in the house, which we had almost been without for almost like two to three weeks. Um... And then, stuff like that. Comfort food. Comfort. She went out and got comfort food. But she felt better. And she said the people stopped texting her. Ha <laughs> ha! I gotta grab a weight, y'all. I just realized I didn't have a weight. And she said the people stopped texting her. So she felt, like, way better. Ooh, let's do some hand stuff. Oh, I hear the baby. I hear the big dog. Yeah, y'all. I, I love doing this. Yeah, I hear the baby. I hope she ain't doing nothing. That she gotta be putting her cage for. Cause she's free, but like my grandmother used to say, I hope she ain't free till she fool. Ha ha ha! My grandmother's favorite. Free till you fool. You could tell the emancipation people, the enslaved ones, because that was it. Because after the emancipation, they used to say, free till you fool. Cause. You, like you didn't have any rules. You did have rules. You just didn't have plantation enslavement rules. So like I'm saying, you're free to your fool. You're free to your fool. So if you want to know African Americans from other cultures, that's another thing. And my grandmother used to, no, my mother used to say, we ain't slaves no more. I remember the child saying, what? 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 what, what is that? They never taught that to us in school. What, what, what's, we ain't slaves no more. What would I mean? What that is? And she said, oh, yeah. you'll find out. You know, and she went to the Raleigh, she went to the March of Washington, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and then eventually I did find out, but that's something that said so unconsciously, like part of the vocabulary. It's part of the vocabulary. It's part of the vocabulary. Um, saying, we ain't slaves no more. Free to your fool. Oh, here's another one, one of my aunts. Some people can't handle freedom. See, that's how you know you were in an African-American family. Because that's, 
in terms that we speak of. That baby is up there rocking the place. I got seven minutes. That puppy. I tell you. That puppy up here. So, that's how you, you can really tell. Other than that, um, we wasn't taught black history. Like that. But I think I'm making this point because I'm, I'm walking, but I'm also trying to listen to hear exactly what the puppy is doing. And then we got the, the little Brussels Griffin, so he's in his cage up there. So I'm kind of listen to hear if they're interacting or anything like that. But, um... Let's grab a weight. Um, so you basically can tell if you're in the home of African Americans, they that type of dialogue is going to slip in the conversation. Uh, like say if you're in the home of generation of Caribbeans, they don't speak in those terms because they came from a Caribbean island where slavery was brought them they were a hundred and maybe a hundred and fifty years before we in America, uh, you know, was not a slave. So, those are terms that you hear, and you can basically say, yep, free to your fool. <laughs> Let's do 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I use that for the baby because she upstairs. I'm hearing her. I don't know what she's doing. I know the big dog is up there with her. They could be fighting. They play fighting. Let's do 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What's a good luck? Woo! This quick walk. This quick walk is almost over. And I hear a tomfoolery going on up there. Tomfoolery. But they'll be doing it till I get up there. Because they got four minutes. <laughs> so whatever they're doing, they've been doing it. And I'll see. <laughs> Jumping around. I don't hear any barking. And I usually can hear the barking. So sometimes the baby entertains everybody. So... We'll see, because she got her muzzle on and everything. But, I tell you, being part of a pack is something. <laughs> it really is. Until you put three dogs together, that pack mentality and how that little dog can lead the big dogs, it totally, it totally makes sense. It totally makes sense because it happens. The little rough Brussels Griffin is 10 pounds. The one pit we got is like 75 pounds. The other pit is like a solid 35 pounds, 40. And the little 10 pound Brussels Griffin. But he bosses them around. And when he gets scared, he runs behind us. And of course, we back him down. But, um,. There's times I have to find myself saying, don't listen up to the little Brussels Griffin, listen to me. I'm saying, get out, get out. But the little Brussels Griffin say, Brussels, stay, Brussels, stay. So I'm like, get out. And the little Brussels Griffin's like, Brussels, stay. So then I have to say, you better stop listening to him before you find yourself in the crate. And then it comes back to them, who really is in charge? Now my daughter, who's the alpha of our pack, she doesn't have to say anything. 
I mean, she doesn't have to do all that stuff. She says, get out. But every now and again, she does say, ha! She says that the little Buster Griffin has mind control over the two pit bulls. And that's why, though we're telling them to do something, he's looking at them. I, word of honor. He is looking at them and directing them what to do. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm walking. Yes, indeed. I'm walking. Oh, yeah. Just for me, I'm walking. Yes, Thank this quick little half on. hour is over. And I feel energized and I feel good. So happy to be walking. The last week I'm of the month, y'all. The last full week Thank of the month. Gotta be proud. I know I am. Yes, indeed, I'm walking. Also, yes. happy to be walking. Thank you for the company. Absolutely. Thank you for the company. I'm yes. Yes, indeed, I'm walking. Oh, yes, indeed, I'm walking. Thank you for the company. Ha ha ha. I'm walking. So yes. Have, have, have me to be walking. Thank you for the <laughs> We did it. We did it. We start the week off right. We did it. We did it. We start the week off right. Thanks for your support. YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe bell and like. See you tomorrow.